points. The range bonus point is simply an addition. You have to travel five kilometers instead of 500 meters. I think the range bonus price is simply, simply a pretty good idea, which shows the good concept of the X price, because there are many teams, as I said before, 21 teams, and there are simply teams that are building rovers which can travel 500 meters and instantly fall apart. <laughs> it's something they built with rocket engines, so they have a, a fuel deposit, and if this fuel deposit gets burned out, the rover is uh, stood still. So it's not a very intelligent design, as I think. It's only made up to win this competition, but it doesn't help the world in any technology reason. What we try to achieve is always to get an advantage for everyone out of this. But we will come to that later. Um, okay, so then there's the survival prize. It's something I really like about this. The survival prize, you have to survive 14.5 uh, days on the lunar surface over a lunar night. The lunar night and the lunar day have quite a lot of difference because we have, on the lunar day you have plus 160 degrees and at the lunar night we have minus 160 degrees. So, and the uh, shape over time vector, I have, don't have a graphic in this, but um, I could show you afterwards. Uh, there's a graphic I have um, created so you could see that they have only about, let's say, two hours where these two extreme differences collide together. Normally, every hardware you have right now, for example, this laptop would immediately be break apart because of the extreme temperature differences. Which are tush and back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, okay. And the last but, le but not least is the diversity bonus prize. Diversity bonus prize is something they set up to uh, encourage teams to take people uh, to don't just uh, make German-based teams. I heard of teams that just for locals, like um, people from California or something like this. This is something I really don't like because right now we're living in a world where we have the internet and everyone's connected with everyone. Why should everyone not be allowed to work together in a team like this? That's why the Diversity Prize encourage teams to invite people like them. For example, our team has team members all across the globe. I will show you a slide about this later on. So, not just local-based teams. <clears throat> Okay, let's sum up the complicated things about the X-Prize. It's, it's just an easy summarization. So first you have to get to the moon. Getting to the moon, I will show you how we do this at the end of this uh, presentation slide. Then secondly, huh? okay, uh, second, this relative complicated part, <coughs> you have to do a soft landing on the lunar surface. Um, soft landing on the lunar surface it's not like you see on many videos from Mars landings or science fiction movies. Um, the lunar surface has no atmosphere. I saw teams proposing to use airbags to land on the moon. It's hmm? Jack trying to call you. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Ah. You might want to hang up or, or just tell him you're busy or something. Uh, no, no, no problem. I, I think I will call him back later. He knows the time when he's uh, due. Okay. Okay. Cool. Just, just thought you should know. Oh. Our special guest has been revealed, sorry. <coughs> okay, um, okay, soft landing, hard part. Next one, communication. Communication, as I said before, we have a special presentation at this at the end. So, I just leave out the details, but it's very, yeah, it's okay. I'm not accepting right now because it's take too long to explain to him that we can do this in 30 minutes when it's due. Um, <coughs> okay, and the survival of the lunar night. The survival of the lunar night, as I said before, is not just about temperature. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the intention for this picture was something like um, everything's better with bacon. <laughs> Okay, um, one thing I want to say in regards of this, um, you don't have to adjust the temperature, you have the radiation. But the radiation, Arne will give you um, some uh, details about this, what the radiation means for your computers or your iPhone, whatever you have, and some nice pictures of this later on. Okay, so just see what slide I got next. Um, this is just a trans transition over to the next section. I'm really into animations. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about budgets. 
This is a topic I really like because we've got NASA. So everyone knows NASA back from the 60s. So does everyone know what budget they had back in the 60s? Let's take a look at this number. It's 90 billion 870 million current euros, uh, yeah, euro. I translated it to the current unit euro because US dollars uh, number would be quite longer. <laughs> okay, and if you look at this number, it's, it's simply incredible. You can't say anything about it. But uh, they had to develop a whole lot of new technology back in the 60s, so we're taking this into credit. Just compared to nowadays moon missions. So, the, uh, one of the latest moon missions we had was the Chandrayaan moon missions, set out by India. They used a lot of components available on the free market, so just not just bought, but they just bought components like um, rocket engines and so on. And so they got to the relatively small price of 40, no, 64 million euros. Then there was the... Ah, so this was only um, orbiting missions, not just landing on the surface, just, just getting to the moon, orbiting, taking pictures and crashing down sometime. Okay, and then we had the Air Force mission, which was quite successfully in the last two months and it was about 53 million euro. And let's compare this to the uh, Google Lunar X price. So you see, you get a price money of 20 million euro and even the cheapest moon mission we had so far and moon missions who buy all of the shelf technology required certain, a lot of more money to do this. So, just for one before I start talking about this, this is what we have in mind for our moon mission. It's not just a number I'm showing up, it's just our planning schedule. We are not going to exceed any more than this amount of money. This has something to do with the things I will show you in the next slides. So, okay. It's quite an easy summation. Okay, first of all, we are not going to build any kind of rocket or rocket engine. So we are not totally nuts and going into our skets and pulling together rocket fuel and blowing us up. So. <laughs> It's, uh, it's something you can't do something like this. Uh, I have to say it, and NASA it took NASA 10 years to build a rocket that's not going to explode just to lift up. As I have to say it, they had exploding rockets every week at their testing ground. So it's not easy. And you can't say, okay, I'm going to build a rocket. No way. So you have to buy one. So actually there is um, something new development in this regard. So most of you, I don't know if you know about it, there is a space provider, it's called SpaceX. A space provider, sorry. <laughs> <There's a laughs> um, they're providing you the capability to get payloads to low Earth orbit using uh, self-built rocket engines and they're quite good at it. They have the Falcon series, but we save some pictures on it later, so just spare this one. Okay, the second part, as I said before, our approach is to using much as possible existing technology. So you see in the upcoming slides, we are not reinventing anything. Okay, just skip to the next one. So, and one important thing, it's a low budget. Why I'm saying this? Low budget always are try to be bad things, low budgets. Because they are limiting you, you can't do this, because you don't have money for this. Think about the following. If you have a lot of money lying around and you say, okay, this is your budget, it's about one billion, let's say US dollars. What can you do with it? Hmm, why not? Let's waste some millions on some studies and look at this and another millions goes by. Um, there are a lot of studies happening just to see could it be possible to do this or this and this study just costs some millions. I don't want to make any special... I can talk about this topic afterwards because I have some examples for this but I don't want to blame anyone right now. But there are simply um, not useful studies going on and they're taking a lot of money and if you take this money you could simply finance a moon mission by itself immediately. So, okay, so using, having a low budget means you don't waste money. That's what I want to say with it. So innovation. Innovation is something everyone says right now, nowadays. It just means that we try to use most of high technology as possible. As again, <coughs> you will see this later on. So we are not using technologies back from 1990, uh, 1995, so, okay. And, ah, Jack again. Okay, no, uh, no time. This is applying right now too. No time just means um, the first deadline for the Google Lunar X Prize 